pretty hard to see. If you didn't know they were there, you wouldn't probably wouldn't see them. That far, I'm gonna probably head on over that direction real quick. See anything over there? Conducting surveillance. Get a GPS, general GPS location on them. And gathering intel. This work has an air of espionage. 582, 508, you trying to get a hold of me? But it's an overt operation. A mission to find precious fawns in a herd of pronghorn that's on the verge of disappearing. It had reached a low of somewhere between 16 and 20 animals. Game and Fish Wildlife Manager Brad Folk is talking about the Sonoida Elgin pronghorn herd that lives in the grasslands of southeastern Arizona, not far from Sierra Vista. Hopefully we'll start picking some critters up. It's about, what, 5.30ish? In the early 2000s, oh, wow. the herd averaged about 80 animals. By 2011, as few as 16 remained. Well, I think historically pronghorn populations in Arizona have, have cycled through ups and downs. We've done several releases, supplemental releases in these southeastern Arizona population. Drought's a huge component. There's no single reason for the decline, but loss of habitat is definitely a factor. Human development has carved up the countryside with fences and roads that impede the movement of pronghorn. Yucca and mesquite are choking out their grasslands, and nearly two decades of drought has limited the availability and nutritional value of vegetation that pronghorn eat. That affects the health and birth weight of fawns and diminishes their ability to survive. The population stress is here. We have drought, of course. Uh, but more importantly, these pronghorn have gotten to such a low threshold that the loss of even one fawn is absolutely critical and unacceptable. So that's why we would like to get up to 100 animals and then they can sustain natural mortality. We modified three miles of fence along this boundary. And this is Glenn boundary. Dickens is with the Arizona Antelope Foundation. His group has been working with Game and Fish to improve habitat by building water holes, modifying fences, and using prescribed fire to open up grasslands and stimulate the growth of new vegetation. They burn 320 acres, and um, just here in the last uh, month, there have been two does and two fawns observed dead center in the burn, which you'd expect. You see anything over there? Despite all of that work, the Sonoida Elgin herd remains a population in peril. For three straight years, 2009 to 2011, zero fawns were added to the aging herd and its numbers plummeted. I mean, drops of 50% two years back to back. So we went from 60 some animals down to, 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 a, to a high of what we could best estimate is like 16 to 20 animals. Folk says a healthy herd should average 40 fawns for every 100 does. You know, the past 10 years, our fawn to doe ratio has been roughly averaged about six. That's not near enough to support a population. That's why we saw that steady decline. So Folk and the Antelope Foundation went to the Arizona Habitat Partnership Committee with a project proposal designed to grow this population of pronghorn. Funding was granted and the three-year project started in 2012. It includes a plan to supplement the Sonoida Elgin herd with 70 to 80 pronghorn from New Mexico and Chino Valley in Arizona, and to improve fawn survival by removing coyotes that prey on young pronghorn. We're just trying to buy them some time while they're in that stage of development that they're just basically helpless. The translocation hasn't happened yet, but a contract hunter has been hired to remove coyotes during an eight-week window when fawns are most vulnerable. It's specifically targeted to fawning areas. We have fawn drop here May 10th. Give or take 10 days, 80% of the fawns will drop during that period. So those, that coyote removal is very strategic. It only occurs in April and May when the fawns are being dropped. The project calls for three straight years of predator control. And as far as numbers of coyotes taken in here, you know, it's surprisingly high. The first year we, we just hunted the population by, by hunting methods. And, you know, in this area, there was only like 12 coyotes removed by, by the hunter. This year there was 26 removed. In addition, about 90 coyotes have been trapped on private land during the regular trapping season. And, and that is nothing but a positive for, for pronghorn antelope. I think we got about 10 people out right now doing a saturation ground survey. Trying to Folk and his team are out here today to find out if that work yeah, uh, paid off. 
we're mainly just focusing right now on what what kind of fawn crop we got hitting the ground because uh, within the last month month and a half we've had some fawns born and from uh, early glimpses uh, it looks like it's going to be a pretty good fawn crop again this year last year we had 20 fawns born which was uh, unprecedented numbers uh, after our first year of predator control we were really happy and we're, if we can get that again this year we're going to be we're going to be off to a good start for a three-year project There we go, there's a doe. Let's hope she's got a companion with her. I got a single doe, all I can see is one right now. I'm hoping there's a fawn around her. Just have to watch her for a while. She's just standing still. Yep, there's a fawn with her, two of them. She's got twins. That's awesome. That is awesome right there. There's nothing like seeing the doe with a fawn, and there's nothing like seeing the doe with two fawns. <laughs> 2013 was another good year. The survey team discovered 17 fawns, bringing the total to 37 in the first two years of the project. That's really the goal behind this, is sustaining a native population of pronghorn here in the grassland habitat. It's about keeping antelope in a landscape where they were native to. The intensive predator control project is giving this herd a chance to grow. The translocation of 70 to 80 additional pronghorns scheduled for January of 2014 will make the herd even stronger. Our goal is to have over, you know, 125 or plus animals here after our three-year project. You know, give them a good shot in the arm and, and see if the population can go ahead and grow on its own from there. It's no sure thing. The real test will come when the predator control ends and coyotes are back in business. But Falk is optimistic. Everything's looking pretty solid right now. With a little bit of help from Mother Nature in the form of drought relief, he believes the long-term success of the Sonoida Elgin pronghorn will prove to be a mission accomplished and not a mission impossible. That is awesome right there.